China has sent three astronauts to its recently built space station. This launch is the start of continuous occupancy at the space station known as Tiangong. It was officially completed last month, but astronauts have been on board parts of the station since last year to complete construction. The three veteran Chinese astronauts will stay in orbit until May. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us now. Hey there, Bill. So talk to us, first of all, just about the significance of this launch. Well, it's really interesting. You know, the Shenzhou 14 crew, which took off last June, has been living aboard the Chinese space station. Now the Shenzhou 15 crew is going to come take their place. And the significance is it's a direct handoff. In other words, the station has been permanently manned or will be permanently crewed. Uh, from the point that the crew got on board last June and they're handing it off and they want to make it permanently manned. In other words, like the International Space Station we're more familiar with, there will be rotating crews on board the Chinese space station indefinitely into the future. So it's giving China a toehold in low Earth orbit that they hope will be permanent. Yeah, this really, Bill, feels like part of the space race that's developing here um, as we're watching this. So far, only Chinese astronauts have been to the Tiangong space station, but officials have said they may eventually open it to other countries. Bill, do you see that happening, and what countries might that be? Well, it depends. You know, I mean, a lot of folks are interested in putting astronauts in space to do commercial research, uh, Earth observation, that sort of thing. And, of course, it's a point of pride. Uh, for countries that don't have their own native space program to have a way to get into orbit. Uh, NASA, of course, is barred by law from working with the Russian, I mean, with the Chinese on the International Space Station. But as you say, China has talked about letting uh, members of other countries come up to their station down the road. Uh, we don't know those plans. They're not as open about it as the International Space Station partners are. Uh, so that's a little bit in I won't say it's in secrecy. They just don't announce their plans in advance. But I fully expect to see representatives of other nations on that space station in the near future. Hmm. Uh, Bill, if you don't mind, I'd like to turn to the Artemis mission. As you know, it's one of my favorite topics when hanging hmm. out with you. Uh, NASA announced over the weekend that the Orion capsule broke the record for the farthest a spacecraft designed to carry humans has ever traveled. I think we have some of the incredible photos of that. But I'm wondering, Bill, if you can tell us what that milestone means for NASA's mission and for what happens next. Well, you know, the whole point of the Orion mission we're talking about here, Artemis 1, is to put the spacecraft through its paces in deep space. They want to make sure that all of its systems work properly before they put astronauts on board in 2024 for a flight around the moon. Uh, this particular orbit, as you say, has taken the spacecraft further than any other uh, human-rated spacecraft. And in fact, we've seen some pictures from that lofty perch. Uh, looking back toward Earth, you could even see the Earth being eclipsed by the moon from mm -hmm. out there, which is really quite a spectacular shot. Uh, so, you know, whether they actually beat the distance record or came a little bit less, it really doesn't matter. The record itself doesn't matter. It's putting the spacecraft in deep space and testing it out is the point. And they've been very successful so far. No major problems on this flight. It's really gone like clockwork. Very successful. You, uh, you write that it is a near flawless mission. And that's so exciting, of course, for all the things to come in the future. The, the moon, Mars, and beyond. Bill Harwood, thanks.